This is a right angle adapter for my bridge port that will allow me to put an R8 collet in and do milling operations at a right angle to the quill. Problem is with this is that the bearings are shot in here. So it turns, but they're pretty rough. So what I'm intending on doing is pulling it apart and ordering some new bearings to reassemble it so it can be uh, operational again. Problem with that is I need a spanner wrench, a pin spanner wrench specifically, to get this cap off here. Pull out this screw, put two pins in here, and this should turn off. I don't have one of those, but what I do have is a chunk of steel that I found in the scrap bin, which I believe this was an old miter gauge off of a table saw. And it's already been tapped over here for a 5 16 by 18 screw. So my plan is to go on this other side here, drill and tap this for the same size screw, and then cut it in the middle and put a hinging mechanism on here so this will fold in on itself so I can get the right distance apart here. And then I'm going to take these two bolts here over the lathe, I'm going to uh, turn them down, probably grind them in to get that perfect diameter so they'll fit in here, nice snug fit, so I don't wall out these holes, and I can hopefully get this off. The reason I want to do it with these is, say I break these, and just back them out, put new ones in there. Um, and if these don't hold up, I can probably get a stronger steel, so I believe these are like a mild steel, this is a Harbor Freight set, so don't be surprised if these break off, but you can go out and get a higher grade uh, bolt and do the same thing, turn it down, and I'll give you a stronger pin. So, first order operation, we need to get our hole gauge here, we need to figure out what we're dealing with. Good resistance all the way up. One thing to keep in mind that I just realized with this, I'll bring this in close to the camera, see if you can see it. So you got a slit right down the middle. So if you're not measuring on a two furthest end pieces here, the parts are spreading apart, you'll get an incorrect measurement. So this is for people like me who are novices. If you've been doing this a while, you already understand this concept. But this is technically an oval shape right now. It's pushed out at this end and at this end. So you can get the wrong measurement, pull in the camera here, this way. But if you turn it, then you get an accurate measurement. So this is coming in, I'm going to say this is, I'm probably going to make these at 140 and then I will slowly grind them down to get the right size to fit in here because I want this to be as tight of a fit as possible. The reason I want a tight fit with this is if these aren't tight and you have wiggle room in here, you will start wallowing out the hole, so making the hole wider at the top and then you're probably never going to get that um, cap off. So. I'm going to try to sneak up on it and get it in there as tight as possible. That way we don't damage it. So, first let's go over the mill and build a bar. So what I'm trying to do right now is figure out where the middle of this is. So I have my edge finder in here. I get, yes, I'm probably supposed to put this in a collet, not the drill press chuck. But for this operation, it's not uber critical. I want to be within a couple thousandths. And the deviation of this drill chuck is going to give me instead of a collet. Because you're going to get more, um, for lack of a better term, wobble. Or you'll be off a couple more thousandths in a chuck than you would be in a collet. I'm not worried about it for this operation. I think it'll be just fine. So 
we'll get this thing dialed in here and figure out where the center line is. I've also held the part over here outside of the um, vise. The reason for that is because it's such a narrow part, the hole I'm drilling is so big is I don't want to be able to take a chance of going down and nicking my parallels that I have underneath here. Showing you how I got the center of this part here made is I use this edge finder here. So I started on this side, found the edge, then I came up here, zeroed out my DRO, lifted the quill up, came over, found the edge on this side, and then back to the DRO, hit my X, then half, and then this is the number that comes up with. So this is how far over I need to move the table to put this right in the middle of this quill and that should give us a pretty accurate center line of this part. Alright, so got the hole tapped. Now I put a bolt in here. So it's holding these two in the same spot. Clamp, and I'm going to drill a hole on the other end here, and this will be the pivot point.
Okay, we're over at the lathe now, and I've got this set up. I've already done one of these so far to test my theory out, so this is a bolt. I threw it in the three-draw chuck, and what I've done with it, let me see if I can get a better angle here for you. There we go. So the idea here is, is just to grind this in so this is a perfectly not tapered, just a straight um, shaft that will go in the hole, and then it'll land up here at the shoulder when it's all the way in, so you don't have a whole bunch sticking out. Um, I tried turning this just using a cutting tool. It threw it off because you have so much stick out here that the three jaw chuck couldn't hold it. And this is kind of soft metal to begin with, so I'm even curious if this will even work. So I found that grinding it in, uh, it took a little bit longer. Yes, I have to let it cool, and it's probably not the best setup, but for this application, this is it's worked so far so good. So we're going to uh, grind this other one and see if we can make this thing work. Okay, so here's all our components that we need to make this spanner wrench. So these are the two arms. Here are the two pins. The pins will screw in right here to both the arms. And then the arms come back here to this hinge mechanism and we can adjust however big of a spread we need depending on how far apart the uh, holes are that we're trying to use this on. So that's the basic design right there. As far as the shoulders of these and the way I built them, I used the grinder on my lathe to try to give me a nice sharp shoulder here. I'm gonna see if I can bring this into focus for you. So now that this is tightened down here, what you should see is when this pin goes into the hole, sorry, it's not focusing just right. Um, most of the force is going to be transferred right there at the base of the pin. If you're transferring the force up here at the tip, then you have a high likelihood of breaking this because this is a pretty narrow piece of metal. So we want as much of the force being transferred there at the base. Same thing with this other side. As you can see, I have a longer bolt, so I just added some shims here. So it's tight in the threads. So it means it's, when it's assembled in the arm here, it'll be nice and tight and it'll just leave enough of that shoulder exposed to be able to take the load. So let's tighten there. Let's tighten down our hinge assembly here. We're ready to try this out. Now this is not a pretty design by any means. This is just some scrap steel that I had laying around. Um, obviously I didn't do any fit and finish like chamfering the corners or anything. Um, I'm a little bit of a time crunch. I want to get this project done. So this is version 1.0 and if this works, I will do a version 2.0. So here's our head. So those fit in there perfectly. Those are nice and snug in there. And so all I need to do is figure out a way to keep this from moving. So I could potentially put an R8 collet in there. I do not want to clamp onto the back here because like I said there's two gears in here and they're at 90 degree angles to each other. So um, you don't want to put the amount of torque on this shaft here that's already required to take this off. Also, there is a screw here that we're going to have to remove too.
So now I can try uh, figuring out how to set this up so it stays locked. All right, so this is where the point that we're at right here. I have this thing. This is a draw bar that I built. So this is bigger than the thread here uh, that goes in. And this is this bigger portion here is up against a, I guess the a collar in here essentially. And then the threaded part goes into the collet. And then I have a three quarter inch collet, a piece of three quarter inch round bar. These are my soft jaws I have in here. So the soft jaws will deform against the uh, brown stock here and hold it in place. I didn't want to use my serrated jaws because it would just tear up this piece of bar stock. So I've tightened this down with a pair of uh, vice grips and so this is now one unit right here and I was able to take sorry I'm gonna get this put on my tripod here so I can free up the other hand so you can see what I'm doing. So I was able to get the spanner wrench to go in here and I used a lot of WD-40 and a lot of heat on this so that would hopefully free up these threads that have not been opened in probably 60 plus years so I did get this to pop off camera I apologize I didn't have the camera rolling for that but essentially I was just leaning on this really hard putting a ton of pressure into it um, and then a design flaw I just realized with my spanner wrench here is it rotates like this so not the so just not a great design there so I'm gonna have to fix that in the future so I took a nut put a nut here in the middle and then that's the fulcrum point and then that allows us to turn so you see I got broken free it took a ton of time with the propane torch and the WD-40 but that did break free all right, so this went a lot better than I expected. Um, some design changes up I make in the future. I would have only had one pivot point here versus a two because it causes this um, deforming action where in the future I might just weld one of these sides up here. So you only have one part that pivots and the other part be stationary. So say weld this side up here at 90 degree and then this be the only pivot point. Um, I like the design of this. Uh, it worked well. I can probably cut off the excess uh, part of the stock here. And having different size pins for different applications, uh, I really like this. So, you know, this is just a little bit of time at the bandsaw and some time at the mill to drill and tap some holes. And it worked. It was kind of a rush job, but you know, everything came together and I'm really surprised that these didn't break. So I put a ton of force on this thing. So, you know, that really exceeded my expectations. So maybe I'll do a version 2.0, make it give it a little bit better fit and finish. This is just, like I said, a kind of a rush job. And yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. So hopefully this uh, gave you guys some ideas, maybe inspired you guys to get out there and make some projects in the shop. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and uh, have a great day.